Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I know it's been a fucking minute since my last video. I apologize for that. I really, really, really do. So I figured that the first thing I want to do as my first video back after being gone for about a month, your yeah, girl was gone for a while, I want to sit down and do a spa night chit chat because this is one of you guys' favorite videos that I do and you guys want to hear the tea spilled, you want to know what the fuck's going on, where the fuck I've been, like, I ghosted you guys for a while, and I'm so sorry, <laughs> I'm so, so sorry, but hopefully you guys can understand why once I get to that port, but I wanted to first just tell you guys what the fuck we're doing tonight, so my skin, as you can see, is not in the best shape, I mean, it's not terrible by any way, shape, or form, but I could definitely have some spots taken care of, like right here, this little dot right there needs to go. The redness needs to go. I'm gonna go ahead and just do a mask. You guys know my Holy Grail mask. Freeman Feeling Beautiful Avocado and Clay Mask. I love this shit. That's all I'm gonna say about it, okay? Also, for those of you who are gonna ask what my shirt says, it's a crop top from Rue 21, and it says, Damn, it feels good to be a gangster. Um, obviously, <laughs> obviously I'm not a fucking gangster ass bitch. But I fucking love this shirt. I thought it was really cute and it was seven bucks. So if I can find it on Route 21 still, I will link it down below for you guys. Alright guys, so let's just jump into it. So the reason I've been gone for so long is because I've been very preoccupied with like adult shit. And uh, the most important adult thing I've been dealing with is purchasing my first house. Yes, girl. Your girl got her first house. Um, I had seen two... Ha well, actually, this is a lie. Um, my husband and I had looked at one house um, before everything else. And honestly, we were just looking to see what was available in the area and how cheap it would be or how expensive it would be. You would think for being in the mountains and living in a national park, things would be very, very expensive. And for the most part, they are. It may not be expensive... Expensive? What the fuck? It may not be expensive when you first buy the house, but as time progresses, you learn about the taxes. School taxes are a fucking bitch up here. They're so expensive. Um, and that's kind of the reason why we kind of held off for so long on purchasing a house. But we actually found one house first. The first one we looked at, we fell in love with it. It was on two and a half acres of land, so we would have had plenty of space to do whatever the fuck we wanted to do. It was private. We didn't have like many, very many neighbors, which is a good thing because we can tend to get pretty loud when it comes to music, especially me. When I'm cleaning, I want to listen to my salsa, my bachata, my fucking cumbia. I want to listen to my music loud as fuck, you know what I mean? So that's what I really wanted was privacy because in an apartment building, you can't really listen to loud music, at least not without creating some enemies for yourself. So that's why we decided to go ahead and go with something that was by itself as opposed to another like apartment. Anyways, like I was saying, um, the house we originally looked at, the one that had the two and a half acres or whatever, um, we put the bid on the house. However, a few days later, somebody came in with cash and was like, nah, bitch, I'm taking this shit. And they took it from out from under us because we were one of the first ones who put a bid in. So what I guess they were doing was waiting to the last minute to see what someone would bid for the house. And then they would just go with cash automatically and just get it right from under us. So that sucked. It was very disheartening um, to lose a bid, to lose out on the house that honestly we really, really wanted. But it was almost as if it wasn't supposed to happen. You know what I mean? Like people say that doors, certain doors close on purpose so better things can come to you, which that was definitely the case because um, house number two, we didn't really give it much thought because looking at the house, I mean, it was very, very decrepit. Um, it would take about $30,000, which is what it was on sale for, because it was a foreclosure. The house itself wasn't, like, move-in ready, and it really was not up to, like, inspection standards, so it wouldn't have passed an inspection, even if it tried, even if we wanted it to. Um, just because a lot of stuff there was outdated, the house was from, like, 1900s, it was ridiculously old. And not to mention, it would take just about thirty grand to get it back to where it needs to be to be able to be lived in right away. So that would just not be a really good investment on our end. Um, but then the same day we were supposed to see that house, the second house, um, the realtor guy texted me. He's like, hey, I have one more house that's in your budget I want you guys to see. And that is the house we ended up getting. And I am so excited. It's a three bedroom. We honestly think that it has so much potential. They put the bid on Thursday of last week when I first saw it. Um, we learned the next day on Friday, they called me at work and they're like, girl, you got it. Well, they didn't say girl, obviously. They're like, hey, we're excited to tell you, you your bid was accepted. Um, so now we're going to go through the whole process for closing and all this bullshit. So within six to eight weeks, we're going to start moving into the house, which I'm very excited about. However, I'm not 
that excited because that would put us pretty close to uh, like the middle of December moving in and I really wanted to be completely moved in by Christmas so fingers crossed we can be in completely into the new house before Christmas. That is the big news on our end as far as like the good shit that's been happening. So that's been like I said the major distraction on our end however there were some other things that I had to deal with that were kind of preventing me from filming and uploading on a daily schedule. Number one thing that I've been dealing with is the fact that my laptop took a huge big fat steamy ass dump like it just decided one day it was like fuck this bitch I am not gonna work for her anymore like she fucking sucks ass I am filming on my iPhone 7 plus I love the clarity the picture is really good I'm learning how to use um, iMovie which it's taken me a little bit to get used to it because it's so different from Windows Live Media Movie Maker I think it's called but from what I've heard uh, iMovie is like the best editing software and it really once you get used to it it really is the best you can get for your money so with that being said that's what we're using from here on out all right so now for everything else because there's quite a bit more that's really kind of just kept me from YouTube so let's just get into that am I the only one that feels like especially when it comes to the beauty drama channels or the drama channel like community in general Am I the only one who feels like everything has gone to like a complete shit show? Because I feel like a lot of what these people are reporting on is all just like random bullshit that really doesn't make any fucking sense. Arguing about who can and who cannot use screenshots, people getting pissed off that people are using the watermarked screenshots and I'm just like what the fuck is going on? There has been so much shit happening over the past few months, especially when it comes to the beauty community. Like, so much shit has happened. Like, more recently, obviously, the biggest story has been, obviously, Fenty Beauty and the fact that they were, like, slaying the entire fucking makeup line community in general because they had, they, the first fucking release, they had 40 shades of foundation. And there are still brands to this day who have been out since day one of fucking makeup, pretty much, who, can, who still fucking fail to recognize that there are more than just 10 different skin tone shades in the world and they only released the 10 so it just was so funny to see Fenty Beauty come out and fucking slay everybody's entire existence that was fucking hilarious watching a bunch of brands get butt hurt more specifically makeup forever got butt hurt as fuck and tried to shade the fuck out of Fenty Beauty but they kind of just failed and it's just so funny how now that Fenty came out and like read everyone to filth without even fucking trying now everyone's getting butt hurt as fuck and trying to keep catch up with them like that's just hilarious to me but on top of that we saw the release of the Laura Lee palette and let me say something right now okay you guys know Laura Lee does not like my ass she doesn't know who the fuck I am but she obviously does know who the fuck I am to an extent because she blocked my ass on Twitter because I read that bitch to filth for being a shady ass bitch to Chris and Dominique doing some shady ass shit you know what I mean like she didn't like that and she blocked me it is what it is I don't give a fuck I never liked her videos anyways quite frankly all the tea all the shade I don't really think that she's as amazing as everyone puts her out to be, but that's just up for you to decide, obviously. That's my opinion. Um, I'm sure there are people that I watch that you feel the same way about, like, I feel about her, you know what I mean? So, it is what it is. If you agree with me, you agree with me. You don't, you don't. It's okay. When it comes to the drama community, I feel like a lot of these people who are doing these videos are only reading Laura for who she is as a person or who they think she is, and not so much about the product, which the product itself, the palette she released for what is it now like 40 something dollars close to 50 bucks for a fucking palette that only has like what 12 shades that are pretty much just really really underwhelming it's just not worth the money at all that's worth reading her for I've seen a lot of like drama videos from the drama community like reading her to filth about the way she speaks making fun of the way she looks making fun of the way she mispronounced or misspells things I'm just like girl fuck bye I don't understand why people feel the need to read people for like simple shit like simple mistakes and quite frankly like I said I don't like Laura Lee I don't know that girl from Eve I have no idea who the fuck she is I know all I know about her is what we see on what she puts on videos and shit and I know she got a bad rep recently because she attacked a bunch of people for talking shit about her palette when they were just giving her constructive criticism I understand that some people don't know how to take that kind of shit they don't know how to take blunt honesty but I feel like the people who are the most blunt with you because they're the ones who are honest enough to tell you like what the fuck's going on you know what I mean and isn't that the point of YouTube when it comes to the beauty community is going to your subscribers and watching videos of reviews of different products and if you're the brand owner of a product 
product, let's say the fucking baby lips line of lippies, and I say that this shit is shitty because it's too slick, it doesn't really moisturize, it just wipes away with one swatch. It's like, if I told you all these negative things, I would hope that as a reviewer and, and you as the producer of this product, I would hope you would take notes and go back and prove it. That way the next time I review it, I know for a fact that you took me seriously, not just me, but everyone seriously took our notes to heart and decided to go ahead and improve upon what we said. Now, not all people see that way. Everyone, for whatever reason, like Laura, think that you're supposed to worship the fucking ground they walk on, the toilet they shit on. I don't understand that. And they, they must think that everyone's supposed to automatically like their shit the minute it comes out. But let's be real, that palette is so underwhelming. Like, it's it's so boring. And I just, that color scheme is, it's cancelled. We have, I can go through my entire collection right now. The entire collection I had back here. And I guarantee you I can pull at least like five or six palettes that have shades that are similar, if not almost identical with better quality, for a cheaper price tag. Let's be real. So to me personally, I don't understand why she gets pissed off at people for saying shit like that. It's the truth. It's our truth. It's how we feel. Now, I've seen so many different reviews of this palette because I honestly did consider buying it. Even before I saw the like the actual shadows and the shades in the palette, I was like, you know what, maybe I'll give it a try because it's, it's an influencer product. But when I saw those shades, I was like, girl, buy. That is so boring. I am not going to waste that much money on something that boring not gonna happen going back to my original point the point I'm trying to make is I just I, I don't like Laura I don't agree with a lot of things that she says and does and of course I don't like the fact that she can't handle people reading her when she does something shitty but it is what it is the fact of the matter is I don't understand why a lot of the drama channels are pretty much attacking the girl for things as stupid as the way she talks the way she pronounces things and shit like that like that's not something I would read somebody for that's ridiculous to do and that's what I've seen from a lot of the drama community is not necessarily like the actual drama people who are making the videos it's a lot of their followers which I understand the biggest argument against having a following here on YouTube is that we as the people who make the videos have no control over our followers our subscribers but at the same time if you see someone saying something like that you would think you know if you were any kind of respectable kind of person you'd be like hey like that's not it's one thing to you know make a joke about something that's totally irrelevant about the situation but to make fun of her and the way she talks and she like that that's fucked up and I have a dark sense of humor I can handle a lot of dark ass shit like there is some shit that I've laughed at that I probably gonna go hell for but to me because I, I have a brother who has severe a severe speech impediment he stutters very very badly so for me I take not offense, but it kind of bothers me watching people make fun of somebody with a speech impediment. I'm not saying she has a speech impediment, but watching people make fun of people for the way they talk, for how fast, like, I talk very fast, and I know that. Once I get on a roll, I don't fucking stop. I talk very, very fast, and I understand that. Some people consider what I do, talking really fast, stumbling over my words, and mispronouncing sometimes. They consider that a speech impediment, but I can't help it. It's who I am, it's what happens it's when I talk, that's it. The only thing I can do is try to slow down, but once I get on a ramble, that's about it, your girl's gone. Bottom line is, I mean, I've seen so much bullshit coming out of the drama community, and a lot of it is just so stupid to me, because there's so much shit in the world right now that's so negative, where we could really honestly use something that's actually positive in the world. But all I'm seeing coming from the drama community, for the most part, are videos reading people like Manny and Jeffrey once again because you have nothing else better to do. Reading them for stupid shit, uh, Laura for stupid shit that doesn't make any fucking sense. Making videos about a couple's breakup every five fucking minutes, I feel like. I'm sorry, Martin Lewis, I don't understand the obsession with the couple that you've been featuring on your channel. I don't get it. I don't understand where that came from or why it's so intriguing. But I just think it's kind of fucked up to kind of exploit that and uh, put your own input on it. You know, I mean, I just, I don't know. To me, it seems kind of stupid. I mean, unless, of course, you're working with the people to get more exposure for them or whatever the case may be. I don't know what the fuck kind of arrangement you have for these people, but I just feel like the community itself is, like, lacking in content, so they're reaching for, like, any fucking thing just to start fucking drama, to start having beef with people. And the other thing that I've been laughing at as far as, like, what's been considered drama recently is people fighting over who and who cannot use certain um, screenshots 
shots. Now, this argument has been talked about for a long time. People are kind of on the fence either way about it. Me personally, I don't feel like anybody should have the right to watermark a screenshot, especially when it comes to a screenshot that pretty much anybody can get their hands on. I feel like it's really stupid. It makes no fucking sense. And it, what makes it even more stupid is when other people use a screenshot as, let's say, let's say Sam, here for the tea, uses a screenshot and she watermarks it. She automatically assumes, pretty much for the most part, that anybody else who has that exact same screenshot somehow removed her watermark and used the same screenshot in their videos, and it's caused a stir for whatever reason. Um, and I, I just, that's, that's how I've taken it. All the drama I've seen, it makes no fucking sense. There's, there's beef between people for no fucking reason. If that's what they want to do, if that's how, wanna, how they want to carry their channel, it's their channel, they can do what the fuck they want to it, obviously. That's been my argument this entire time. But I'm just saying, there's so much more important shit to argue about other than fucking screenshots and who can use a screenshot and who can't use a screenshot because let's be real the only person who really should be allowed to use it who is not stealing it is the original poster anybody else who has screenshots including my ass we're all stealing hello none of us are innocent and you know what one could say okay well I asked this person for it and they really only wanted me to have it okay but this is the internet Anybody can get their hands on anything they want to at any point in time. It's not that hard. So yeah, that was just like, oh, that's just a couple of things that kind of just like stirred me away from making a video recently. And the other thing that kind of bothers me is the fact that I feel like people, the influencers for the most part, are saying like really racist ass shit or really fucked up shit just for shock value to get views. But I just, uh, I don't know. I, I view all these influencers as so trashy right now. I feel like... I feel like everyone is just kind of taking a nosedive in general and it, it, it makes me upset, it makes me sad because like I said there's a point in time where Kathleen was my ride or die, I watched her religiously, I loved her content, I thought she was really cool, but then this whole thing happened with Jacqueline and the Snapchat bullshit and yes she made a mistake or at least she said she did and she did apologize wholeheartedly, I do believe she was sorry but I do not buy that that girl has never said that word ever outside of that one time on Snapchat, I don't buy it. And people were saying, and she even said, oh, well, she was just drunk, she was a little tipsy, bullshit. I'm sorry. If alcohol makes you say racist ass shit, maybe you shouldn't be drinking. Just saying. And this goes back to what I said earlier, a long time ago, actually, about how I feel like the drama channels could do so much better and actually bring forth, you know, really interesting stories that really do pertain to the beauty community when it comes to maybe a shady ass brand, a shady ass influencer. That's one thing. But to just go on and ramble and rant and fucking be assholes to each other for stupid shit doesn't make any fucking sense to me. Even though it gets people all the views they want. So I guess it works out for them. So I can't say shit about that. But anyways, that's one of the reasons why I've kind of stayed away from it because there's just so much useless drama going around for no fucking reason. People are arguing with each other. Fucking here for the tea is in the middle of a bunch of shit herself being a shady ass bitch and people are actually finally seeing her for who she is. And I'm just, I'm just sitting over here with my tea like girl. I fucking knew this shit all along, okay? I guess the final thing that's kind of been like keeping me down in like how I feel is how shitty the world is right now, guys. It, does anyone else feel like they're affected by how shitty it is right now to be alive in this world. It's so intimidating and so terrifying to live in a world that we do right now where we can wake up every single morning and there's one more shooting, there's one more mass shooting, there's one more massacre somewhere in the world. And I just feel like it's never ending. And not even the shootings that are fucking coming up now. It's fucking natural disasters. Global warming is fucking real. I don't give a fuck what that dumb orange cheeto looking dickless bitch in the fucking White House says. He's fucking stupid. I'm sorry. I don't like to get political, but people have asked me for so long, including Gigi, she's like, what do you think about Donald Trump? I've kept my mouth shut because I'm not one to get political because I get very, I get very argumentative when it comes to shit like this. And people don't like when I get this way because I really get into the argument because I'm very passionate about what I say about this kind of shit. But because we have a dumb bitch in the presidency right now, a dumb Cheeto looking ass fucking Chester ass Cheeto bitch fucking president dickless bitch without a fucking brain to call his own in that fucking big ass quaffed head of his. He wants to say that uh, there's no global warming, global warming is not real, all this bullshit. His agenda has been to kind of get rid of the global warming argument, but you cannot deny that global warming is not real anymore. 
with how active of a season we've had, especially back down in back home in Florida. Holy shit, guys. There has been storm after storm after storm after storm in the Caribbean. The fucking, the Caribbean, guys. Oh my god, that's another thing that pisses me off. The other thing that fucking burns my balls about Trump, that dumb bitch, is the fact that this dude said we need to focus on the homeland front first and then everybody else. Bitch! If you fucking went to school at all for any length of time, you would know the U.S. Virgin Island as somebody who has... A pretty good sized influence pool. I've got, with all my social media combined, over 8,000 people watching me at any given time. With that kind of influence, I just feel like, especially with the bigger drama channels, the bigger influencers for that matter, a lot of influencers luckily have been trying to push organizations that are accepting donations for places like the US Virgin Islands and Puerto Rico and California now. But I feel like the drama community could do so much better than what it's doing right now because quite frankly it's a fucking shit show. I just don't like what it's become and I really wish that people would really take a look at what they have as far as blessings. I don't want to be that religious person, but I'm going to be honest with you guys. I'm very grateful and I'm very blessed to live the life that I live. I'm blessed that I'm able to afford a house. I'm blessed that I'm able to afford shelter for myself and my family. I'm blessed to be able to afford most of all this makeup that I buy for myself for the most part. I'm blessed to be able to drink clean water on a daily basis. I'm blessed to have food in my stomach, food in my fridge, food in my freezer, food in my cabinets. My house is full, my electric is on, I've got clean water to bathe in, my animals are healthy. I'm just a blessed person. and. To watch these people suffer because the president of the United States of America, fucking big ass bitch, just because he wants to ignore them and wants to say that they're not part of the US or he wants to selectively forget they're not part of the US and not want to help them because of fucking debt they owe? Are you fucking kidding me? But this bitch is racking up fucking dollars keeping his stupid ass fucking family off the fucking White House premises and racking up millions and millions of dollars in bills keeping them in fucking luxury ass hotels going to fucking Mar-a-Lago every fucking every other week. Fuck you dumb bitch. I fucking hate this. I fucking hate Trump so much. I just, I don't understand why the world is where it is now. I don't understand it. I, I just... <laughs> so that's basically, um... That's basically what's been going on with me. I know it got political towards the end, I apologize, but I'm just saying, I mean, the drama community I feel like is full of very, very, what could be very talented people. Um, and of course, like I said, I'm not talking about every drama channel, um, but I just feel like we could be doing so much more with the influence we have collectively. Um, some of the drama channels have more subscribers than the influencers themselves that they report on. It's insane. Um, and that's the reason why this weekend I'm going to go through my closet. I'm going through my makeup collection in the next few days, actually. Um, I've got so much shit that gets sent to me. I've got so many clothes I don't even fucking wear with tags on them still. Um, that I have no business keeping on and holding on to when there are people who need them more than I do. Because everything they had was taken from them against their will. Um, I'm gonna try to see if I can get something like a group or a link, a direct link to certain places for you to send stuff to. If I can get that all together, I will put it down below in the description box for you guys. I just want to focus my time and energy on something that is worth my time and energy because there are human beings right now without power, without food, without clothing, without shelter who need our help, who are part of this country. It doesn't matter what the fucking fake ass fucking orange bitch ass fucking president says. I don't give a fuck what the fuck he thinks or what fucking grade he failed in fucking geography and doesn't know this fucking shit. Puerto Rico is part of the US. US Virgin Islands is part of the US. You know what I mean? There's no, there's no debating it, no getting around it. They need our help. And like Trump said, we need to focus on the home front first and then everybody else. Well, let's start with Puerto Rico because they're the ones who are suffering the most. But anyways, guys, I'm going to get on out of here. Um, I'm, I'm very excited to be back. I have to tell you guys, it's honestly, I've been missing filming so much, but I wanted to kind of just take a break and focus on getting the house stuff situated and figuring out my filming situation, getting that all situated. Um, I've just, it's been a shit show of a fucking month, past two months actually for me. So I'm, I think I'm back where I need to be. I'm good. I'm happy. 
Um, yes, I have things to do, but I'm going to put my entire effort and heart back into this channel and give, give you guys what you guys want. Um, so if there's anything you guys would like me to talk about, I, by the way, I want to give a quick shout out to, uh, Shop Hush and, uh, the Face Candy Company, Bad Habit. They all sent me a shit ton of new palettes to share with you guys, to show you guys, and I'm so excited to do so. Like, they're all still in the box. I have swatched a lot of them, but let me just give you guys a quick little sneak peek of what's to come in the next few days here on my channel. This is the coveted Aphrodite palette, which is supposed to be a direct dupe of, I'm pretty sure, the Huda Beauty palette. Look at this stunning ass palette. If that's not a direct dupe, I don't know what the fuck it is. This one, guess what this is supposed to be a dupe of? Can you guess? Leave it down below. How about this one? <laughs> like, when I saw these palettes, I was like, girl, these are almost identical to a lot of palettes that are already out right now. How about this one? They're crazy pigmented, so beautiful. I'm so excited to share them with you guys. I'm gonna have a full swatch video. I'm gonna try to do each palette in one video um, for its own video. That way I'm not overwhelming you guys with like 10 different palettes because there's literally 10 different palettes they sent to me to review for you guys. So with that being said guys, I'll go ahead and let you guys decide what you guys wanna see first. Do you wanna see the subculture uh, comparison? Do you wanna see the Huda Beauty palette comparison? Do you wanna see the Naked Heat comparison? Do you wanna see the Anastasia Beverly Hills Modern Renaissance comparison? How about a Unicorn Glow highlighting palette? How about a Too Faced Chocolate Bar Candy fucking whatever it was palette? And then this is just a highlighting palette that's really pretty. So let let me know what you guys want to see first. I'm going to get on out of here, watch this stuff off my face, and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye!